Artificial intelligence is taking humans to places we couldn't go before. That's what makes this the age of web. The next question is where can humans take AI? AI is an ecosystem we all contribute to and benefit from. The next important insight could come from anywhere, and with so much happening so fast, this ecosystem needs a focal point. We created the Global Deloitte AI Institute to answer that need. What role can AI play in my business? How can we use AI in trustworthy and ethical ways? Why isn't there more diversity in the AI workforce? How does my AI career start? And where is AI going next? The Deloitte AI Institute is leading the global conversation on AI. We are connecting businesses, universities, think tanks, policy makers, and startups. We are highlighting today's visionaries, data scientists, and emerging trendsetters. From the boardroom to the college lab, the Deloitte AI Institute is bringing forth insights and using our deep knowledge of all aspects of AI to make sense of this complex ecosystem, cutting through all the hype and providing insights to help enterprises make informed AI decisions. I'm Bina Amanat. I'm the executive director at the Deloitte AI Institute where we are not just preparing to meet the AI future, we are shaping it together. Join me online to find out more. Hi everyone, Hi. welcome to today's event from the Deloitte AI Institute. I am so happy you're able to join us today. So throughout this series, you have seen us dive deep into how AI is changing different industries. We have looked at financial services, life sciences, healthcare, consumer, technology, media, and telecom. But today we are going to look across all industries. And I have a very, very special guest joining Nitin and me today, Dan Helfrich, Chairman and CEO of Deloitte Consulting. So let's get started. Dan, can you get us started with a brief introduction? And then Nitin, can you introduce yourself? Bean, it's fun to be with you and Nitin today. Uh, and hello, LinkedIn Nation. Uh, I am joining from uh, my home just outside of uh, Washington, DC. Thrilled to be here for the conversation. Uh, I've been at Deloitte for more than two decades. Uh, I've had the privilege of working across a bunch of industries, both in the public sector and the private sector. And it's been incredibly fun to be the CEO and captain of our team for the last uh, two and a half years or so, as we've seen uh, major technology transformation drive major business transformation and, you know, AI and the thoughtful use of AI has been right in the middle of it. And this is uh, Nitin Mittal again. I lead our AI business in the Deloitte US firm. And perhaps uh, kind of borrowing a leaf from Dan's book, I'll uh, myself as the captain of our AI business in Deloitte. And uh, with that, uh, I actually help a lot of our clients as well as Deloitte as an organization becoming an AI fueled organization, which is the essence of this talk series. Thank you, Dan and Nitin. So Dan and I first met at a Fortune CEO event that was focused on AI. And this was even before I joined Deloitte. Mm -hmm. So I know AI is something that's on top of mind for Dan. So first question to you, uh, Dan, Nitin has been talking about this concept of an AI fueled organization focused on clients transforming their front office and back office, leveraging AI to drive value throughout the business. As Deloitte Consulting CEO, I know you engage with clients across all industries. How have you seen clients leverage AI to drive transformation throughout their enterprises? It being, it's a really interesting time in the market right now because there is a selection of enterprises, both in the private and public sector, who yes. actually are taking on the theme of AI-fueled organization and believing that they can use artificial intelligence to leap forward. And frankly, there's some Bina who are stuck in a vision of AI mm -hmm. that is automation. And uh, what we're finding is that those who are focused on automation 
are finding very small micro advantages, maybe a little process efficiency. And those that are embracing the idea of an AI field organization that I can actually redesign the way I serve customers. I can redesign the way that I run the back office of my business. Those enterprises are making massive leaps. They're growing market share. They're driving costs. You know, I, I think about a, a company like Exelon, for those who don't know, Exelon, one of the biggest energy private utilities in, in the country. They've rethought their entire relationship with their customers by using AI to sense things like outages, to sense where customers may have challenges to proactively communicate. We certainly have seen uh, a bunch of companies. I was with a telecom the other day that's rethought their call center function entirely. Again, not how do I use RPA to drive some efficiency and process. This is the integration of machine learning and process and you know deep artificial intelligence. And again, organizations like that are taking the leap as opposed to the incremental step. Right. So, you know, in, in your experience, do you, have you seen any commonalities across these industries and clients on this journey? Anything specific that's contributing to their success? Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, uh, Dan kind of touched base on a few of them. What I would say is this, through a lot of the work that we do for our clients, a lot of the observations that we have, a lot of the trends that we follow, as well as frankly, our own multi-year state of the AI in uh, enterprises and the survey that we actually issue to that effect, what we find is that irrespective of the industry that you're in, there are six very specific areas that AI actually brings value. Yeah. AI brings value as it relates to speed to execution. AI brings value as it relates to cost reduction. AI brings value as it relates to reducing the complex to something simple that can be intuitively understood through the power of machine learning generated insights. AI brings value as it relates to transforming the way that organizations engage with their customers, particularly in a omni-channel setting. AI brings value as it relates to fueling innovation. The best example of it is literally the design and rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine during the pandemic uh, era that we have unfortunately been living through. And finally, AI kind of brings value in terms of fortifying trust, which I'd like to kind of double click on a little bit later. But these are literally the six areas that we have been able to distill across every single industry where AI actually kind of brings value and goes to the point that Dan made specific some of the organizations who are literally applying AI to derive value in any one or more of these value areas. Yeah, Nitin, that's very helpful the way you articulated it with six key areas of commonalities across companies. Now, changing gears a little bit, uh, you know, we hear a lot about the talent war that is underway in both AI and digital transformation in general. How does a professional services company like ours view the current talent market and how is Deloitte addressing the space? Question for you, Dan. Well, Bina, I have to tell you, I, I do hear the question. I do hear the comments about war on talent. And I don't love the expression because the war on talent kind of implies there's a finite pool of people and we're all fighting for them. Um, my view is it's our responsibility as a society and our responsibility as a professional services organization like we are to create new talent with new skills. And, and so... You know, we, we spend a lot of time in our existing team saying, what are the baseline skills and understanding of AI and machine learning that everyone should have? Not just if you're an engineer or a data scientist, but if you're a consultant who focuses on human capital and change management, well, you better have a working understanding of how AI can transform the organization you're helping navigate uh, culture change. Then 
we, we obviously are building things like academies and institutes where we're getting to really deep levels of proficiency and skill development for the modern technologies, the modern applications of AI in a business context. So is there a premium for those who already have the skills, who already have the experience to apply AI in a modern context? There absolutely is. But we're spending more time on how do we raise the water? How do we raise mm -hmm. the level of proficiency for all of our people and, frankly, for society? Because that's when modernization will happen. That's when AI-fueled organizations will take place, as opposed to relying just on the select few. Yeah, so true. And, you know, I just want to take a pause and acknowledge everybody who's typing in good morning and good evening in the chat. Really love it. But, you know, guys, feel free to, uh, you know, type in your questions, anything ready to take on your live questions and answer it as well with Dan and Nitin. So, Dan, one of the key components, and I, you know that I'm equally passionate about this, is, you know, there is, a, you know, bringing in new talent and enabling everybody but a key component of it is especially for ai is diversity can you share a little bit about how is deloitte actively engaging a diverse pool of talent in this field of ai well there's no question bina that when i say that our job is to create more ai proficiency broadly that that has to start before people show up at the doorstep of organizations like ours or people who are joining this broadcast looking for a job. And so we're doing intense things in partnership with nonprofits, with uh, academic institutions like UVA, like UC San Diego, like Morgan State University, which is a historically black college and university, to say, how do we, at a much earlier age, at a much earlier time in one's education development, find people with passion and interest in an area like AI? And how do we provide them the skill set and the foundation and the confidence to move forward? I was, Bina, I was talking to a Black data scientist interested in AI the other day. And it occurred to me that he was one of the first black data scientists with a passion in AI that I talked to in many months. And that's not okay. We all need to do our part to create greater diversity you know, on our teams. The last thing I'll say, Bina, is, and, and you spend a lot of time on the ethics of AI. I'm sure we'll talk about that throughout this broadcast. But the only way we arrive at ethical artificial intelligence is if the teams that are teaching the algorithms, the teams that are observing the real life impacts of the algorithms are as diverse as possible, demographically and experience sets, et cetera. And if we don't do that well, then AI will run amok. If we do do it well, then the power of AI will be captured. Bina, I think you're on a mute. So true that, you know, I, I'm a huge believer to get that, make sure that diverse teams are part of the AI journey to make our uh, AI solutions even more robust and, and uh, fair. Uh, there are a lot of questions coming in here. So I'm going to ask one question uh, to Nitin. What are the new set of skills that are being looked at and how are you empowering uh, your talent to have that new set of skills. Yeah, no, certainly. And in fact, uh, you know, Dan made this reference to academies that we're actually standing up in Deloitte. And the purpose and function of these academies is to start importing these new set of skills. Now, I can sit here and I can sort of literally go on on the specific technology-related new set of skills. Everything from machine learning to ML ops, to simulation, to deep learning by leveraging neural networks, et cetera, even getting into the field of what is called advers adversarial networks, where you use the power or leverage the power of simulations being able to kind of uh, compete against each other for the betterment of the underlying algorithms. 
I can literally kind of uh, go through many of them. What I would like to kind of focus on in terms of uh, the skill sets that are really crucial is probably two in particular. One is around the trustworthiness of how AI is applied. And then second is around the business understanding of where, how, and for what purpose AI is, uh, is actually applied. Many times what happens is that we tend to focus on the underlying technological prowess that is required and the skill sets to essentially get into the field of AI. Equally important as we get into that field of AI is where is AI being applied? How is AI being applied? For what purpose is AI being applied? And is it being applied in a trustworthy manner? Those skill sets are equally, if not more important, because the societal impact that Dan talked about, societal impact and societies do not necessarily change just because of a new technology that has emerged. It actually change, changes based on how the technology is being applied. How does it actually transform the everyday lives of individuals? How does it actually help take our notions of what society and civilization should be forward? And that understanding of the application of the technology in a trustworthy manner that helps not only organizations and us as individuals, but society at large is paramount in terms of the skill sets that one should be thinking of. Thanks, Nitin. Uh, there's a great, great question from Andrew. Uh, and Dan, maybe you can answer this. He, he says that I think a common barrier to engage AI can be feeling like AI is just a tech or IT thing. Can you speak to some examples of how AI can be applied across various spaces like Deloitte's various portfolios? Well, uh, AI is a catalyst for transformation. And I would say, Bina, that most um, clients that I'm spending time with are actually getting it, that this is not just, uh, that this is not just technology. So what I'm seeing where the magic happens is if you take a well understood business challenge, let's you know go back to the example I talked about earlier relative to contact centers. I have a well understood business challenge. I need to improve the engagement and the responsiveness with a set of customers. And I need to engage uh, in a faster, higher velocity way. And I'd love to do that in a way that drives cost out of the system so I can apply those resources some somewhere else. Well, then I get a group of people around the table talking through the challenges. And then some people who have expertise in AI are there who can expand the view of the art of the possible. And so it starts with this discussion of what's the vision, what's the business process we're trying to transform. And those with expertise in AI help to bring reality and expanded um, potential to mm -hmm. the conversation so that those who aren't as technology minded and may not be as up to speed on the latest potential, yeah. their vision and ideas can take form. Where it goes wrong is if it's a business problem that is then lobbed over the table to some small group who, yeah. you know, oftentimes are in, you know, an IT department or a transformation office and say, you know, go figure this out. That's where yeah. we lose the back and forth. That's where we lose the context. So true. And Ricardo actually has a follow up question, which can, which if you can, what human skills will be necessary to go through this transformation with AI? Well, the number one human skill is um, inclusivity, mm. of which um, there's a lot of dimensions of inclusivity. It includes the ability to empathize and to listen. Um, it includes the ability to communicate effectively. It includes the ability to sense the human implications and the human experience 
impacts of the AI that's being practiced. That's the magic. And that's why, you know, Bina, as we've talked about before, there's this yeah. age old discussion about is artificial intelligence replacing masses of human jobs and making the human more important? Heck no. What it's doing <laughs> is actually making that human judgment and the understanding of the impacts of the technology on the human experience that much more important. So true. Nitin, there is a question from Christian that I would like to ask you. Are there any core tools that Deloitte is focusing on? Not necessarily kind of a specific tool. Um, mm -hmm. AI is a very vast field. Uh, there are a plethora of technologies. There's a number of companies in this uh, space. There's uh, certainly kind of uh, what are called the hyperscalers. But beyond the hyperscalers, you've also got a proliferation of startups, boutiques, product companies, and everyone is essentially starting to embed AI in some form or shape, either in their product or their solution or their offering and consequently their value proposition. So this is not uh, necessarily, in my kind of view, um, a field where you can gravitate towards a set of technologies or tools. Rather, you have to essentially kind of look at the entire landscape and the canvas associated with it. Everything from conversational AI to natural language processing, to natural language generation, to vision AI, to data in motion, to how AI, insights are generated leveraging uh, machine learning algorithms to actual technologies that help with inclusivity as well as the ethical applications of AI. All, yeah. them, all of them have to be looked at. And Bina, just to add, there's a beautiful thing happening right now, which is in the ecosystem, and by the way, ecosystem is a terribly overused word, but I think in this case, it's applicable. In the ecosystem of startups, big business and academia right now, the amount of R&D, the amount of applied innovation that's happening is magic. And it's incumbent upon people in larger enterprises like Deloitte were one to make sure we're tapped into that ecosystem, that yes. we're harnessing that innovation, that we're finding the best and applying it to the you know industry context that our clients find themselves in companies that think they have this figured out uh, will be big losers in this moment because the pace of change is so fast and we, we all need to take advantage of that innovation that's happening on on the edge so true, so true. So Dan, a, a question from Steve. Uh, what are some examples of how Deloitte has used AI to improve better business decisions or improve customer communication? How are we using AI within Deloitte? Uh, we're using it in a bunch of ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll take things that seem simple but have been super powerful. We're using AI in recruiting, in the talent acquisition processes where we're trying to source candidates and we're using AI to try to find the right talent to actually eliminate bias from processes like resume screening and things that have happened uh, in the past. We're using AI then in a completely different way, for example, in our finance function. Yeah. We're, we're a big enterprise that uh, at times can get bogged down in some of our core finance processes. Well, we've intelligently used artificial intelligence to improve our cycle times for things like billing and invoicing and other important uh, finance collection processes. And then uh, we're embedding AI into the way that we serve our clients. So, you know, Nit and I spent a lot of time talking about the things yeah. we've done a lot of, like let's say a big uh, technology implementation, maybe an ERP or a migration to the cloud. Well, what Nitin spent a lot of time doing is saying, let's look at those modern technology and tra digital transformations that's happening and how do we embed AI into those as opposed to viewing 
AI is some That's project right. over here and a cloud migration as a project over here. And so we're seeing huge benefits. So inside our walls, a big benefit, but certainly in the way we engage with our clients, hopefully a big benefit too. I, you know, Nin, this is something you have a lot of passion for. Yeah, no, I can kind of certainly uh, add uh, on this uh, topic. In fact, uh, there's another question that I know was kind of posted around what business functions are showing the highest adoption of uh, AI. It actually goes to also the type of investments that Deloitte is making so that mm -hmm. are irrelevant player as it relates to those uh, business functions and not only uh, kind of apply AI to ourselves, but help our clients fuel their own AI journey. Take investments like Smart Factory. We are re-looking at essentially the process of manufacturing and the entire global chain post a product actually being manufactured, wherein you've got essentially new norms that are coming uh, to the forefront. You've got new technologies that are being adopted by manufacturers and the manufacturing uh, plant of today is far more modularized, far more nimble and far more smart than the traditional assembly line manufacturing that we have known for the past uh, century or so. That's a type of an investment that Deloitte is making and taking forward. Another area is where Dan was kind of going, which is anything to do with touching base with customers. How do you engage customers? How do you actually kind of uh, uh, get them into the process wherein you're constantly building loyalty, you're constantly building a form of engagement, you are providing personalized content and services, and you are essentially building longevity as it relates to the lifetime value of that particular customer. A lot of it is fueled through AI, and consequently, we as Deloitte are making investments in that field as well. So for us to essentially be an AI-fueled organization and ourselves start applying AI, it's not only in the context of back office, but it's also in the context of essentially some of these solutions and value propositions that we are actually building, embedding AI for the benefit of AI fueling our own clients. Thanks, Nitin. Uh, so a, a question from Andres is, which business sectors or industries are you seeing the highest adoption of AI? And Nitin, if you can answer it, that would be great. At this point of time, I would say practically every industry has embraced and is embedding AI, right? Those are the two, I think, in my view, kind of the key words, embracing and embedding AI. Having said that, we do tend to see a lot of adoption and progress with AI in government and public services. In fact, I would say they may actually be the number one industry where AI is being applied in practically every aspect of how government digitally yeah. interacts with citizens and constituents, um, as one example. Another example is life sciences healthcare. Just given essentially the shared dynamism with respect to life sciences healthcare, the, um, the magnitude of the impact of life sciences healthcare, particularly in the US economy, and the pace at which innovation needs to happen so that we could lead healthier lives and that leads to kind of a healthier planet uh, is such that the adoption of uh, AI has been absolutely uh, exponential. And it's frankly, it's only accelerated in the past uh, 18 uh, months. Bina, Bina, if I could add, uh, we certainly should, should say that the tech sector is absolutely um, leading in AI, at times not leading in the ethical yes. application of, of AI, but leading in AI. And part of why that is, is you're seeing uh, organizations and platforms stand up that AI was the native foundation for how the company was formed to begin with. Yeah. And what I think is going to be really interesting, take an industry like financial services, you will see over the next few years, the emergence of more um, digital only banks that provide uh, a, a, a digital only competitor to some of the core, you know, large banks, for example, like they have a bit of an inherent advantage in some ways that they can 
build a company from scratch that has AI at its core. What's going to be really interesting is to see this battle yeah. between the incumbents who are figuring out how to apply AI to a huge customer base they already have and to business processes that have been established in some cases for centuries um, with new startups that don't have the customer base yet, but have a little bit of that innovation advantage. That's going to be fun to watch uh, play out in a bunch of different industries over the next uh, three or four years. Yes, th that is so true. There, there is an interesting question here on uh, a little bit futuristic. Uh, what can we expect in 2030 when many tasks are being augmented by AI? There will be new jobs and tasks, but how will this shift the majority of what humans will do? And I know we have a thriving future of work uh, team that works on it. So Dan would love to hear your perspective on this. Uh, I, I, I hesitate to answer questions, Bina, about things that are going to happen um, 10 years from now. <laughs> I, uh, I've not seen many whose track record is great about precise forecasting within, uh, you know, within 10 years. What, do, what is very clear, and, you know, if you're... Uh, if you want theorems, you can talk about Moore's law. What's very clear is that the pace of change uh, is going to only increase in velocity and the winning organizations and the winning individuals are going to be the ones who are constantly scrutinizing the way they're doing things, scrutinizing the mm. core infrastructure they developed, the core processes they've enabled, and are willing to disrupt them themselves. And so, uh, I, you know, I can give you predictions, and you talked about future work, I can give you predictions that we will be an increasingly agile and flexible work culture, where um, work schedule norms will be even more flexible than they are today. Uh, as one example, so you'll see um, significant changes. The human skill of agility will be uh, even more important. But how exactly that manifests itself in 10 years, I won't make a bold prediction that someone will be able to play back the tape <laughs> from now and, and, and see if I was right. Maybe so, one thing I can sort of explore just to add on to what Dan was kind of articulating is a theme that we've been talking of. Uh, in many of these sessions, which is the age of quit. Um, I think uh, we can uh, probably say with a good degree of confidence that we would see an acceleration of the age of quit. Progressively, we as a society and as a civilization are going to become smarter and more hyper-connected. And as mm. we become more smarter and hyper-connected, we'll have a proliferation of so-called intelligent machines. And it is absolutely paramount upon us to kind of figure out the right synergy wherein humans are working with intelligent machines and consequently accelerating the age of wit. True. So, you know, it, it's, it's a given that uh, AI is having a widespread impact broadly on our society today, and there are uh, negative impacts. There are risks associated with AI, which we all learn either through headlines or through our own experiences. Now, Deloitte, as a company, we are in the business of trust. Dan, how does Deloitte influence these societal norms around the use of AI? Well... Bina, I would, I would tell you that every business is in the business of trust. Mm. Um, and so is Deloitte in the business of trust? Absolutely. But all of our research suggests that trust is one of the single biggest differentiators in both the relationship between an organization and its customers and um, with its employees. So how does trust manifest itself um, in in this world, what are we trying to encourage our clients to do, and what are we trying to what are we trying to make sure we do ourselves? It boils down to making sure that AI is managed with appropriate governance, and appropriate thought, and appropriate learning 
to make sure the AI is used in an ethical manner. You know, we've done some really interesting work with an early adopter, probably the biggest early adopter of one of the large scale financial institutions. And they created some really big advantage in some of their internal processes. They saw some really um, big advantages in their relationship with their customers with the application of AI. But as you looked a few months into the implementation at scale of some of these things, the absence of rigorous governance and risk management approaches created some risk for that organization and frankly threatened the trust covenant that they had with their customers. And so it, for some people, when you hear me say governance and artificial intelligence, it may seem uh, sort of uh, counterintuitive because AI runs on itself, et cetera. Well, there are absolutely thoughtful ways to apply governance and risk management to the application yeah. of AI. And um, the organizations that understand that are, are, are the ones that are getting ahead and the ones that I'd be placing bets on because they are balancing the importance of um, thoughtful modernization with understanding that ethics need to be applied, that algorithms need to be evaluated. And so getting that balance right is yeah. one of the most important artistic dances that yeah. companies and, and, and governments will be doing over the next little while. Love it. Nitin, uh, can you talk a bit about the role of ethical AI and uh, Deloitte's efforts around it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, in fact, I'll probably kind of expand the definition beyond just ethical AI. I'll talk about uh, something that we have been pioneering in the marketplace, uh, primarily, Nina, you know, through your efforts, and this is trustworthy AI. Because when we actually kind of uh, talk about the topic of trustworthy AI, it actually includes several elements. It includes the element of governance that Dan just kind of uh, talked through. Mm -hmm. It includes data privacy. It includes filtering out the noise from the underlying data itself. It also includes around the ethics of the algorithms. Let's face it, today, most of the algorithms are written by humans. Humans for one way, in one way or another, have some kind of either conscious or subconscious bias, even if we actually don't recognize it. And uh, the downside of uh, the field of AI is that as humans write and develop these algorithms, unfortunately, at times, they also essentially encode their own biases in the algorithms. And those algorithms end up amplifying those biases, governing against it, monitoring it, rectifying it and making sure that these algorithms don't quote unquote drift is absolutely important in the context of this notion of trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. If you take it forward, it also includes around uh, predictability and explainability of the outcome. Similar to how humans can explain kind of the judgments that we render, we need to have the same level of transparency and accountability as it relates to AI systems. The ability to explain the outcome, the ability to predict it, the ability to be transparent with how a particular decision was actually arrived and a judgment was uh, consequently rendered. All those are part and parcel of this framework that we call trustworthy AI. That's true. Uh, Dan, Andres has an interesting question. Is it time for all board of directors to have AI experts as members? Um, no, it's time <laughs> for all boards of directors to have AI fluency for all its members. Um, and this goes back to what I was saying before about our collective responsibility to raise the um, skill level uh, around artificial intelligence. Um, it, 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 it can't be isolated to the one expert. Yeah. Do we need mm -hmm. experts in the room, again, to keep us honest about the, the realities and the possibilities? Absolutely. But a single expert in a room of complete novices who haven't conceived of and, and tried to appreciate and understand the implications of AI is actually pretty dangerous. So 
it, w would I, as a board of directors, be my first step be looking for an AI expert? No. Um, my first step would be saying, how do I build an AI curriculum so that my entire board gets to a certain level of proficiency and understanding? Then can I make sure that either as a director or as an invited guest, I have expertise around AI in the boardroom when we're making important decisions? Yes. But I want to raise that I want to raise that proficiency level first, because then more people are thinking about all the implications, all the possibilities, all the risks and threats, as opposed to that being the domain of a single individual. Love it. Dan, you know, we're down to the last five minutes, but I have to ask this one question to both of you. And Dan, I know, you know, and I think our audience today has heard it themselves, how eloquent you are. I, I wrote down the phrase, artistic dancing in organizations <laughs> gives visions. But Dan, you frequently speak about uh, another thing that I absolutely love is your everyday equations. And these are equations that help Deloitte live the culture we aspire to and the choices we make. So if you were to create an everyday equation for AI and how we should be thinking about AI, what would it be? Wow, that's that's putting me on the spot. And first of all, <laughs> um, I appreciate the call out for the everyday equations that you can uh, see them on LinkedIn. It's been really fun to get the reaction, not just from within uh, inside the walls of Deloitte, but from outside. Uh, well, I'll give you maybe a, a, a sort of complex one, Bina. How about this? Ethical managed artificial intelligence is greater than no artificial intelligence, which is greater than unmanaged artificial intelligence. So what does that mean? It means uh, absolutely investing in artificial intelligence can take any organization, any enterprise forward. But if you're going to do it, it better be thoughtful, managed, and with ethics and trustworthiness at its core. If you're not willing to do that, then don't start because the world will be better with no AI in that particular organization than AI run amok. I don't know if that I don't know if that works, but real time we'll we'll, we'll see if that equation sticks. Love it. I I really do. So Nathan, over to you for your last question. What is the one thing that you are most optimistic about as it relates to AI in the future and, and the impact it can have on our client's success. Okay. So I am probably going to, going to play a little bit with the dance every day. <laughs> in terms of like the one thing that I would be kind of uh, very optimistic about, which is we change our language system, our thinking, and the understanding of this field from artificial intelligence to augmented intelligence with the managed ethical algorithms that are actually built augment the human endeavor augment the interactions between organizations and customers augment essentially who we are and the progress that we make as a society and augment the technological prowess and the progress that we could be making as a civilization. It's mm -hmm. the augmentation of the managed ethical uh, algorithms and AI systems that Dan talked of in the context of his uh, everyday equation that I would be the most uh, optimistic about. And then our audience is already ahead and they've put that equation with the greater than sign and everything. So it's, it's a winning everyday equation. All right, All right. well, Bina, before, before we sign off, um, I, I want to acknowledge your leadership. It's, um, you know, you happen to wear the Deloitte jersey right now, but you've been investing, you know, such a huge part of your professional life in um, helping us all understand AI, its power, its possibilities, and its risks. And, um we need more people who are investing thoughtfully in, in that pursuit because this will advance society in so many ways as mm -hmm. long as we do it the right way. Dan, thank you. And that is a 
great way to wrap up this session. Dan and Nitin, thank you so much for joining the session. I really enjoyed our discussion. I have learned a lot and appreciate our audience's time. For our audience, hope you liked it. Let's keep the conversation going. This uh, video will be available offline as well. So feel free to share with your networks and keep sending questions our way. And our next session is on September 30th at 2.30 Eastern, where Nitin will be joined by Mike Canning, our consulting government and public services leader. Also, for those interested, visit us at the Deloitte AI Institute. If you would like to learn more about our perspectives on AI fuel organization and so much more. Thank you for joining us. Take care. Thank you. Artificial intelligence is taking humans to places we couldn't go before. That's what makes this the age of web. The next question is, where can humans take AI? AI is an ecosystem we all contribute to and benefit from. The next important insight could come from anywhere. And with so much happening so fast, this ecosystem needs a focal point. We created the Global Deloitte AI Institute to answer that need. What role can AI play in my business? How can we use AI in trustworthy and ethical ways? Why isn't there more diversity in the AI workforce? How does my AI career start? And where is AI going next? The Deloitte AI Institute is leading the global conversation on AI. We are connecting businesses, universities, think tanks, policy makers, and startups. We are highlighting today's visionaries, data scientists, and emerging trendsetters. From the boardroom to the college lab, the Deloitte AI Institute is bringing forth insights and using our deep knowledge of all aspects of AI to make sense of this complex ecosystem, cutting through all the hype and providing insights to help enterprises make informed AI decisions. I'm Bina Amanat. I'm the Executive Director at the Deloitte AI Institute, where we are not just preparing to meet the AI future, we are shaping it together. Join me online to find out more.